The Big Ten officially welcomes the East Coast to the league tomorrow with Michigan traveling to Rutgers and Maryland hosting Ohio State. With the Buckeyes in town, the Terrapins Bird Stadium sold out for the first time since 2008. Of course, the capacity crowd will be roughly half of what the Buckeyes played in front of last Saturday in the shoe. Mark has more on Ohio State's second trip to the Old Line State this season. What a difference a few weeks can make. After struggling at home against Virginia Tech, the Buckeyes offense has put up record-breaking numbers in the last two weeks. And while Urban Meyer says the Terrapins defense is perhaps the most athletic Ohio State has seen this year, he also really likes the way his skill position players have been working. I, I am really even more excited now about our offensive skill. You know, I just it's, It is a street fight to get the ball right now. You know, when, when you roll three, the thing I, I really appreciate watching is when you can start platooning guys as they're going in. I don't know if you noticed that during the course of the game, but, I mean, you're running new tailbacks and they're running new, and they're, you know, who's better, our first or our third? You know, they're pretty good. And same thing with the two. We have two sets of receivers that can go in. Now we have two tight ends with a very capable third. So we're recruiting some depth, and that's what – when you start talking tempo, you wear out the defense. Unfortunately, we're out the offense, too, if you don't have that depth. Offensively, Maryland is led by Stephon Diggs, a wide receiver Urban Meyer and company recruited hard for the class of 2012. Instead, Diggs chose to stay at home and is second among active NCAA players in all-purpose yards. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a great player. Um, um, I remember in high school going against him in high school and uh, a lot of camp stuff. He's a, he's a great guy, great player. And um, he, he's, he's, he's going to be a, a workload for us. But, you know, that's, that's why we came to Ohio State to play guys like that. And, you know, when, when you line up against them, you just bring your A game because that's what he's going to do. And, you know, it's not even just him. It's just the whole wide receiving core. We just got to, no matter if it's him or, you know, another guy, we got to bring our A game because this is D1 football and this is big time football. And from what I've heard, he's a, he's a playmaker. Um, I'm getting ready to go and watch some more film on him right now. Yeah. But um, from all I've heard is Stefan Diggs. He just makes plays. Um, not just for their offense, but I mean for special teams too. So uh, we're going to have to be on our game for this. Real big challenge with special teams this week. The best returners, best punt returner is number four. He's the best in the Big Ten. And then uh, Diggs is the best kickoff returner. Very, very talented group. And this will be our, I've already spent an inordinate amount of time for a Sunday and Monday on our coverage units for this week because that will be a big difference in this game. I mean, it's the first time we're playing Maryland. Um, they're going to be uh, – wound up and because uh, they get to play Ohio State but um, you know we know they have some playmakers on there they put a lot of points up on Indiana last week um, so we really have to be on our toes and eliminate big plays and execute our game plan. Not surprisingly there's not a whole lot of connections between Ohio State and Maryland no Maryland natives on the Ohio State roster just one Ohio native on the Maryland roster but on the Maryland uh, coaching staff with the offensive line is Greg Studra, the former Bowling Green assistant coach in you know, GA at Ohio State and has got ties to Northwest Ohio. As Mike Miller from WIMA 1150 joins us now, you've got plenty of ties to Northwest Ohio <laughs> as well. Indeed. But <laughs> as the Buckeyes prepare for Maryland, I, I think it's interesting that against Virginia Tech, we saw that Bear defense and Ohio State had trouble with it. Buckeyes say they've seen elements of the Bear defense both in the victory over Kent State as well as the victory over Cincinnati. And Urban Meyer even said, we've got some bear beating of plays now. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and I don't put it past a, a stud, as we used to call him when he was at Bowling Green, uh, for that Maryland defense to try just about anything. You absolutely know they're going to try some of that against the Ohio State offense, but we think the Ohio State offense is ready for that. Kent threw a little bit of that package out there and it had no effect. We'll give Maryland a slightly more credit, certainly, than uh, Kent State. But I think the offensive line for Ohio State is ready for that. But uh, surely Maryland is going to try just about anything to slow down what looks to be an Ohio State offensive juggernaut at this point. How do you slow down this Ohio State offensive juggernaut? If you try and take away the inside run, they've shown the ability to get outside with both Jalen Marshall and Don Trey Wilson. If you try and limit them from the outside, Ezekiel Elliott proved to be very adept at running in between the tackles, and if you finally just load the box, Ohio State's shown they can beat you with the receivers and the tight ends now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're piling it on. Now, let me add to that. Uh, the quarterback uh, throwing uh, well over 60% passing completion. The quarterback, JT Barrett, who we're referencing, surely can run with the football. He's proven that also. And Really, it is the an Ohio State offense that is firing on a lot 
lot of pieces, but it was designed to be this way. And Maryland defensively has been a three down lineman defense. So uh, uh, the Terps are going to have their hands full, I really think, against the Buckeye offense. You touched on JT Barrett. I think one of the big things we saw with JT Barrett was mm -hmm. his comfort level in taking the ball and running and making plays himself and yep. not being just the distributor, yep. but also making teams pay when, when they try and force JT Barrett to beat them. Yeah, showing the confidence and showing the uh, showing the wherewithal and the presence of mind uh, to not panic. I don't think there's any such thing as happy feet uh, with JT Barrett because he has that ability to run. He knows it's there, but he throws such a good ball uh, downfield for Ohio State, and it, it's exciting to watch JT Barrett improve rather quickly as he gets playing time uh, for Ohio State. Certainly the concern for Ohio State fans is the pass defense for the Buckeyes. Maryland, very good wide receivers, a little question mark about who's going to be the quarterback. But I, I don't know if fans have quite adjusted to this new age of college football. I don't know if you will be, ever be able to yeah. shut down passing attacks like you used to be able to in the game. Boy, I, I agree with you there. I think it's almost too much to ask to completely shut down, both in terms of the athletes and the nature of how these offenses are made, uh, that, uh, that teams can run different routes, they can run all kinds of crosses and, and slip screens and things that are difficult to cover play to play after play, you know, 90 plays, that sort of thing. Occasionally, you're going to break a few. You can give up one, maybe two, but three or more like Ohio State did against uh, uh, Cincinnati is just too much. Well, I mean, it goes back to what Hal Mummy did at Kentucky with putting the quarterback in the shotgun yeah. all the time. When the quarterback's not dropping back, when he's getting the ball in the shotgun, he gets rid of it so much sooner. And I, yeah. that's partially what, what's been able to neutralize Ohio State's rush defense has been the fact that yeah. the ball gets out of the quarterback's hands so quickly in just about every system now. See, and, that, and that's the thing that I would take that chance if I'm Ohio State. If I can almost guarantee that I'm going to shut down the run because they're walking away from the run, then you probably have yourself a winning hand. And that's sort of where Ohio State has been. It proved to be the case through most of last year until it, until it finally broke down in the big games against, uh, well, at the end of Michigan, although Ohio State won, but against Clemson and certainly at Michigan State. Buckeyes need to take it that next level, and I think they are. We'll, we'll just have to see. Your prediction for Saturday afternoon? Uh, high hopes, but a difficult challenge against Maryland for a lot of the same reasons Cincinnati was. It's a team that can burn you uh, with their aerial approach, but I don't think the Maryland defense is any better than Cincinnati. They might have a couple more play, playmakers. I think Ohio State offense at the end of the day is going to be just overwhelming. I see Ohio State winning this game something like 44-20. to 20. All right, thank you very much, Mike. As the Buckeyes will put their 16-game Big Ten regular season winning streak on the line at Maryland. Andy, back to you. Thanks, guys. Look forward to that full recap Sunday at 1130 as they make the trip east once again. And, of course, you can check out Urban Meyer's press conference every Monday at 9 p.m. on WSN, Buckeye Insider every Tuesday at 10 on WTLW to get you ready for the upcoming game. And there's lots of online content and the Buckeye Insider playlists on the YouTube channel.